In the last couple of weeks here as a church family, we've been talking about abiding in Christ. So we, we started with the vine and saying, yes, God, I want to abide. I want to submit to you. I want to adhere to your ways. And we know that when we do that, when we say, yes, Lord, I submit to you, I adhere to your ways inside of us, it's produced good fruit in step with his character. And that's exactly what it is. Isn't it isn't good fruit that we get more successful or we get, you know, prosperous or anything like that. No, we get the good fruit. The good fruit that's produced in our life when we adhere and, and, and abide in Christ is His character. It's revealed in us. It's shown through us. And when we went and we walked through, well, what are some practical ways that we abide in Him? Get in His Word. Did you guys get that last week? We read through a Psalms 119. And if, if you didn't read through it this week, I encourage you again, you got another chance. It's a new week. It's a new day. Right? So Psalm 119, read it and fall in love with God's Word. Yeah. It is good. It is refreshing. It's restorative. It washes us clean. And I can't help every time I read Psalm 119, it talks about, last week I mentioned, it, it talks about it being sweet like honey. I'm like, I can imagine my sweetest dessert. And, and sometimes I need to and pray and ask the Lord, forgive me. Sometimes I don't have that view of the Word of God. Sometimes I still think it's a task. Anybody else in it? I don't know where you're at. We'll do guilty stuff this morning. But sometimes I do. I sometimes I think, man, it's a task. It's hard. It's dry. It's, ugh, gotta read it. No, but it's, it's refreshing. It's like a flame and yawn. It's like dessert. It's, if you're a vegetarian, it's like the best salad. It's good for me. That's the type of view of the Word of God that we can have. And we do, again, it produces in us good fruit. Today, and this next couple weeks, we're continuing on this idea of how do we adhere our life to Christ? How do we grow in Him? How, as a, a child of God, a son or daughter of God, do I continue to allow my life to look more and more like Him? And so we're going to do a series over the next four or five weeks called Not Alone. That's, we're not in this alone. Anybody know that's good news? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anybody like working alone? I, 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 there's there's certain projects I like. I, I, okay, I need to clear some space and get my Bible out, get my get my studies out, or maybe I'm doing some kind of uh, graphic design work, and I'm like, you know, I need no distractions. But it's really awesome when I have a team of people around me uh, curry in a box. It would be impossible for me to serve curry to all of our customers if I didn't have a team around me, those who specialize in, in cooking, those who are serving, those who are cashiers. But in this is not just a, a practical thing that we see in the natural, but it actually comes from a spiritual thing that we're not in it alone, that we don't have to do everything on our own, that this walk that we live, this fruit that we desire to be produced in our lives, it isn't just up to us to, to make it happen. Mm -hmm. That we have each other. So don't look to your neighbor and we'll say, I need you. I need you. Hey, you can look again and say, you need me. Yeah. And some of, it, some of that's a scary thought, though. Some of that's a scary idea. You're like, I don't know. I don't know if I need you. But, but it's true. And I'm praying that through this series, we're going to be convinced that we need each other, and, and the person sitting next to you needs you too, so that we can do this walk with God correctly, so that the fruit that God wants to produce in our life is fulfilled. It, it comes to pass. Anybody uh, here have a, uh, do a gym challenge, you know, at the beginning of the year? Anybody? No, I, I recently, <laughs> I, I, have some, I have some good friends, kind of like Bobby, especially when I'm doing cosmetry, who love to work out. You know those guys that are in the, the gym, and they're like pumping iron, they, they got like the diet plan that they've got on, they, they prepare their meals ahead of time. They, I had a friend who all he would eat sometimes was boiled chicken and cabbage, because it, it was his meal plan. That was it, like... Every every day for lunch, and he's like one of those. He's in the in the gym all the time. I'm like terrible. And every once in a while, I don't know if you. I get this way. I'm like, I would like to be that fit. Like you know, like it would be it would be okay thing. Like if I you know I had the chisel and I I know I was in shape. You know, he was always healthy. He was like never sick. You know those kind of people, individuals. And and so I said I said to him, Kevin, could could we go to the gym together? Like let's go to the gym together. Let's let's work out. You know, it's a, it was a funny experience, right? So we get to the gym, 
And Kevin's like, all right, put a, put a 45 on this side, 45. All right, put another one on there, put another one on there. All right, Andrew, you need to do three sets of 10. Go for it. I'm like, I don't even think I could get one of them. Like, you know, right? I'm like, <laughs> but we, as we're going throughout this workout, man, he's in there every day. He's disciplined. He's out there in the morning, in the evening. He has his diet and how he does it. He has running and all this stuff. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to go in there with him and then doing his exercise. So I was like, whatever he's going to do, I'm going to do, right? Take a little bit of weight off. But I was doing everything that he was doing, right? Pumping it up. And then the next day, after the gym, <laughs> I'm like, okay, Kevin, I'll just, next month we'll do this again, right? It was, it was hard work. And sometimes uh, when I'm when I'm partnered or when I partner, I partner myself with some of these guys that I think about that are that are in shape and ready to go, man, it, it's a difficult task to, to jump in there and to to get that discipline right away. But I recognize I need somebody who knows what they're doing. Because other times I've tried to walk into the gym and I'm like, okay, I don't know, there's dumbbells over here, there's this cool contraption over there, I don't know. I don't know how to do this thing, right? Anybody been there before? I, I'm not really sure uh, what exercise equipment works out, what muscles, or anything of that, that nature. But I needed a guidance. I just needed someone to come down a little bit. I told Kevin, like, Kevin, I don't need a, like a level 10 workout. I just need, can you just help me with a level one workout, right? But that's exactly how we walk this, uh, this uh, walk with Christ is we need each other. We need somebody to walk with us sometimes and show us the ropes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So I I look at sometimes I, I remember introducing people to the to a Bible for the first time, some uh, of my friends, and they're like, this looks it looks intimidating. And there's a lot of there's different books. Why does it start here? I was like, I tell them, you can start in John. It's a great it's a great book in it. It talks about who Jesus is, and then they have all these questions. Well, why don't I start here? Or what's this story about? And what's, what's this? We need each other when it comes to walking with the Lord, because some of us in this room have been walking with the Lord for a while. We have some muscle memory. We have some things built up in our life. And, and it's, it's a little selfish if we just keep it to ourselves. Some of us in the room, we're struggling, we're, we're getting into this thing, and we're trying to figure it out, and we don't know, it looks complicated, it looks confusing, I don't know where exactly to start. And you know, it's okay for us to go to those that, that have been around for a while walking and say, you know what, I, I need some help, would you give me a, like a level one lesson? What was it like when you first started praying? Could you teach me how to pray like you pray? And you know what, I want to, I'm, I'm praying, I'm believing that through this series, that those of us that are in that, in that boat of saying, you know what, I need a little help, that we would have courage and say, hey, could you meet with me? Could you teach me how to pray? And those of us that say, yeah, I've been walking with the Lord, I, I have some, some things, some routines, some disciplines in my life that I know will be beneficial, that we would say, yes, I I would love to meet with you. Let's meet together. Let's get together. Let's grow together because, again, this walk with the Lord isn't meant to be alone. It's not meant for us to just do it all by ourselves, standing there in the midst of all this vastness of who God is. Man, we're here for each other. Amen? In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, we're going to turn there this morning. It again hammers down this truth that this is not just a thing in the this is a thing in the natural, and it's also a spiritual truth. That together we become stronger. Together we can produce much fruit. Together, we're going to look at a couple different verses today, but together we become more and more like the image of God. We're not call to do this alone. There is no such thing, my previous mentor would say, there's no such thing as a lone range Christian. Cowboy out of the West, you know, got the cowboy hat, riding alone into the, into the sunset. No, we are called to be a family of God. We are called to have one another's back. We are called to be able to point out each other's faults, to be able to encourage one another to call each other out, to pray for one another, that we could be made whole. And we're not alone. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 4, starting in verse 9, it says this, Two are better than one. Mm -hmm. They need to stop right there, and that be the only scripture we read, and it's something that we can apply to. Two are better than one. You know, even when I'm working on a, a project, whether it be some kind of design project, or maybe I'm, I'm trying to plan something out, man, I, it, it is important for me, in all of the wisdom or the, the ways that God has created me, or the gifts and talents that He's given, it's important for me to get some opinions from other people, because two are better than one. Right? When I'm walking in, in, in life, and I have a, a friend who knows something more than I do, it's good that I come to him and I say, let's join forces, because... Two are better than one. It's amazing that in marriage, that i got to believe that it's not just something that I think, but that I act out that two are better than one. That God has created us both with gifts and talents and abilities to show God's glory. But, and that together, we can become strong and our household reflects the glory of God. That it's not just me to go out and do my own thing or, or to make best plans or, or to do... The, but no, together, two are better than one. Let's see here what all, what all the scripture says that can be accomplished when we understand this truth. Because they have... Two are better than one because they have good return for their labor. So when we partner together, whether it be in marriage, whether it be in friendship whether it be with another brother or a sister, when we, uh, in Christ, we come together, they can have a better return on their labor. Man, this week, or last couple of weeks, we found this out as, you know, Dad has been painting and remodeling the house next door. He, he has a rental property. And, and Dad alone can get, you know, so much accomplished. And, hey, I came over for a couple hours. Other people in the church have come over for a couple hours. And together, man, that work, there was still a lot of work to do. It's still took... But together, the two of us, the, the labor decreased, right? We know this when you're working on any kind of project. When they work in, when an uh, angel goes out and you're sending people out to clean windows, you know you've got one person on there, but hey, two people can work multiple hours together and the, the workload becomes less. And it's true in the kingdom of God. It's true when we talk about spiritual principles, that when we come together, we have a better return for our labor. That's why we talk about on Sunday morning serving together and taking that servant identity. Why? Because when we come together, there more can be accomplished when we come together and we work together for the kingdom of God here in Madison, Wisconsin. That includes, hey, this little service getting together on a Sunday morning. Two coming together produces more. We get better return for our labor. So let's continue. There's more truths here. Verse 10. If either of them falls down... One can help the others up. But pity anyone who falls and they have no one to help them up. Yeah. I'm so glad in my life where there's been seasons that I've fallen down, that I've had a brother or a sister or an awesome wife that God has blessed me with to say, Andrew, let's get back up. Let's keep going. And we could even think of the practical this week when, when Linda fell in her car. I mean, like, it's better that we have two of us together walking this thing out. When we talk about the applications of sin, then we're going to go into James and talk about James and how he encourages us to be together and confess it to one another. But in areas of sin, it's important that we have two of us together because when one falls, the next one can pick us up. It, it, it's not right that when one falls, we just point and laugh, right? I mean, Jesus got into this conflict with the Pharisees, right, a little bit. The Pharisees, they, they found somebody in sin. They all are ready to stone the lady, right? And then Jesus stands <coughs> up, and, and what does he say? No, and those who have, uh, have not sinned cast the first stone. But then he turns to her and says, Go and sin no more. Our responsibility, when two come together and we're strong, when the other one falls, we don't hit them, we don't beat them up, we don't leave them there, we pick them up. Say, hey, let's get going. Let Point them in the way of truth. Point them towards the direction of prayer. Point them in the gospel. But alone, we're going to find out in Proverbs, man, alone, man, is foolish to walk alone. 
Can I get that strong this morning? It's foolish to walk alone. Second part, second part of the verse. Pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them. That's strong language this morning. That's strong language. Maybe I'll use a little bit of strong language too that we motivate each other to see the benefit that we have sitting in this room with us. This is beneficial that we come together as a family. And it's beneficial that we meet together and encourage one another along this road. If we would all produce much fruit to give God glory. Continue. There's more truths here. Verse 11. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. The one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. I just listened briefly this morning. Uh, I love Facebook now. On Facebook I have lots of different friends and pastors. And uh, you get on Facebook on Sunday mornings, I have friends in other time zones. So their church, uh, church gatherings have already started. So I was listening this morning to another, uh, another church gathering. And, and, he, and the, the preacher said that morning, this morning he goes, the enemy is strategic in his attacks that he has for us. It doesn't say in, in, in the New Testament, it doesn't say that, uh, this is what the preacher was saying, it doesn't say that the enemy has darts that he just, you know, shoots at us. Little, I'm thinking about Nerf gun darts, right? Anybody got a little kid? I got a little kid. Nerf, it's not Nerf gun darts that he's, he, it says fiery darts aimed directly at us is what the enemy has. And right here, again, it encourages us. It, it, man, it, it, I don't know what, what is stronger than encouragement. It, it, it demands, it, it like, it's telling us when we're together, we can defend ourselves against the work of the enemy. Amen. But standing alone, it becomes more difficult. When people, yeah. when the enemy is coming from all sorts of, there's stress in life coming from all different directions. We have kids, we got workplace issues, we got life issues, we got personal things that are driving us down. The enemy is trying his hardest to aim right at us, and it says together we can defend ourselves. Standing alone becomes much more difficult. We need turn to your neighbor again. I need you. And you need me. I don't know why. Why did you guys say the second part huh? is stronger than the first part? <laughs> a little bit of pride still in us, right? You need me. Come on. Come on. Talk to me. All right. So say the first part. We're going to say the first part with the same emphasis as we did the second part, okay? Say, I need you. I need you. And you need me. And you need me. All right? We're going to stay. We've got to remember this position of humility, right? <laughs> Y'all thought I was talking about you guys with all the muscles and all the, right? We'll work on that one another time. All right. We need each other. The Bible describes the Satan like a roaring lion seeking who we make his I need somebody to defend me. Y'all know I'm not perfect. I hope you know the same thing about yourself. You're not perfect. <laughs> we don't have these things in order yet. But coming together, coming together, we can stand. We can stand. We can fight. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. I don't know why here. Why here does he say three instead of two? He had all these analogies about two strands, and all of a sudden he said three strands. I could pull some, I could, I, man, Jesus is what binds us all together. Yes. So if I'm standing alone, man, it's going to be difficult. I'm standing with a brother, and it, we got each other. But man, it's necessary that Jesus is in the center of our togetherness, all right? Amen. Okay? So this yeah. is what strengthens us. This is what binds us. This is what holds us. This is what enables us to accomplish much. This is what enables us to stay warm. This is what enables us to defend one another. It's because together we, we say, yes, the common thing, the common thread between us is Jesus, his ways, his gospel, his word. And so together it binds us, and it's, it's hard. 
Some, and when two people are said determined, determined on, you know what, we're gonna we're gonna follow Jesus with everything we got. Right? That's how the home should be set up, right? That's how our personal life should be set up. Where two of us come together and say, for God's glory, we're gonna go forth, right? And nothing less, right? And we're not alone. We have each other. We need each other. Let's look at a couple truths in the Word of God that emphasize this point. We need each other to be reminded of the truth. We need each other because we need to be reminded of the truth. When we gather here on Sunday mornings, I love it. We get to present the gospel to you. But you know what? I'm not with you, most of you, I'm not with you more than an hour, two hours of a whole week, right? So, hey, it's great. Maybe you maybe you got our you got our voices recorded and you're on your phone, put in your ear all week long, you're just thinking about us and thinking about the word. I mean, that's yeah. great. If you are, I, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but I don't know about on Monday morning when I get up, I need to be reminded of the truth. I, Tammy, can I say I picked up Tammy this morning, right? And I, I was telling Tammy, I said, I didn't want to get up this morning. <laughs> I actually hit the snooze button at 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 7.59, I hit like 10 more minutes on the snooze button, right? <laughs> I, didn't want it. I don't want to get up, God. About a minute into it, I was like, alright, okay, I'll just get up. I'll just get up. You know, Monday morning comes around, and I need to be reminded of the truth of God, that, that there's something greater for me to work for, right? I said, Sunday morning, is this something, there's something for me to get up for. There's the word of God that I get to minister to you, I, that we need to come together, that I get to fellowship, and there's something to get up for. I need to be reminded of that truth sometimes, right? And together, as we walk together, we need to be able to remind one another of the truth. Man, when the week gets rough, when the kids start screaming, when they, they're not, when workplace gets tough, when there's another thing dropped on our plate and another task that we're supposed to take care of, man, we need to be reminded of the bigger picture of the gospel. And guess how that happens? One, we have the Holy Spirit. We know that. Amen. The Holy Spirit is there and He's reminding us of the truth. Reminding yes. us of the truth. And that's why, again, you know, earlier sermons, we've got to be in the Word. So when we're in the Word, the Holy Spirit, in those moments, He reminds us of the truth. But secondly, this morning, the point we're making is we need each other right. to remind us of the truth of God's Word when things get difficult, when things get added on top of us, when we start to lose sight of what it's really about. 2 Timothy 2.2 2 reminds us of this, that... We need each other because we need to be reminded of the truth. It says in 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, he said, Paul is talking to Timothy. He says, the things which you've heard me say in the presence of many witnesses. So I would say these gatherings, or whenever we gather together in a large group, that's a, that would be that application. The things that you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable men who will also be able to, what, teach others. That's right. Remind others. So when we gather together on a Sunday morning or we gather together in a missional community type setting where there's many of us there and we're, we're being instructed in the truth, man, they, our responsibility in that moment is one, we self-examine and say, Lord, where, where is it in my heart that you're challenging me to be more like you? But second responsibility is that I would take what I've received and I would tell it to somebody else. That when I take it and I receive it, and then I think about it not just as something, oh Lord, you blessed me, thank you for that truth. But I would store it up inside of me so that in the moment when I see my brother or my sister, they fell, then I can say, remember the truth. Remember what was spoken to us. Remember how we were encouraged. Remember the gospel. Remember that Jesus Christ, I love this one recently, somebody was having a hard time because they didn't, they, they felt like they were being uh, accused of a whole bunch of different situations and they didn't, they don't know how to get out of it. Uh, I was just talking with somebody this week and, it, and I said, remember the gospel. Remember that Jesus was accused and he said nothing. Be encouraged that the Lord will defend you no matter what. You don't have to defend yourself, right? That is the responsibility that we have to each other. We're not in this alone. 
You ever get in those situations where people are accusing and saying false things about you all the time? And man, when you're alone, man, you start believing those things. You get down on yourself. The enemy's voice starts roaring inside of you, and he, he, you lose sight. Man, I don't know, I need somebody. Say, like, Andrew, the, those things are true. Remember the gospel. When, I, when things are accusing, I want to defend myself, and I'm like, I'm ready to go, right? And I'm ready to defend my now. I'm ready to get after it. And then somebody <coughs> reminds me, Andrew, Jesus wasn't worried about defending himself. He let them say all sorts of false things because he knew that God was in control and that his purposes would endure. Andrew, have faith. Stand firm. Man, that's the opportunity that we have for one another. To remind each other of the truth that we've heard, whether it be in this setting, whether it be reading the word, that we would pass it on. Pass it on to others. We need each other. We also need each other because in James 5.16 it says that we can be made whole when we have a relationship with one another. Check out what James 5, 16 encouraged us to do. I love, I love this whole, whole section of, of Scripture. But John, uh, James chapter... Verse 16, it says this. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Mm. And this whole thing is good. In, in, in verse 13, is anyone in trouble among you? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing a song of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call on the elders of the church and pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will rise them up. If you have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other. Pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. I need you and you need me so that we can pray for one another that we would be made whole. We know that this word salvation is more than just saving of my soul. Jesus did not only forgive me of my sins. He died so that I would be and you would be a whole person. And so this journey that we journey together in is to lean on each other so that when one another, when we're failing, or we fall, or we're sick, or we're in trouble, so that we would together pray for one another, that you would experience the wholeness that Jesus died to give you. That's why I need you. That's why you need me. Turn to your neighbor. I need you. I need you. And you need me. And you need me. Right? Right. We need each other because in these moments of trouble, man, when I do it all alone, I get lost in the heaviness of life. Yeah. There's some times where I need somebody to rejoice with me in happiness and sing songs with me and rejoice because God's good. And I don't just look like a fool standing there singing a song, but I think somebody can join in with me and sing and say, God, you're good. You've done good things, right? And then in those other moments where I'm mourning and it's heavy, I need somebody to come alongside me and it's okay. Pray a word of encouragement. And that's why we need each other. That's why we're a family. That's why we encourage confessing our sins to one another. That it's not just, I said the other week, I hate unspoken prayers. I use that kind of strong language because I don't know what I can pray for. I need to know so I can be with you. You need me to know what you're going through. Your neighbor that's in there needs to know what you're going through. So that we can pray, we can encourage one another, we can speak the truth to one another, and we can be built up into Christ so that our life produces fruit and give God glory. We all have a purpose in God's great plan, right? We 
we need each other so that we can pray. Last night we had a beautiful moment. I gathered all the Watutu crowd, the, the kids and the, the whole team. Got to speak to them. There's something that's, I don't know, when it got in me, but when I was young, I used to hear stories all the time, some really cool faith stories from my mom and dad of different ways in life that God came through. You don't know my parents get to know some of the cool faith stories, right? And, and so there's something inside of me that even when I was really young, I believe that God answers our prayers. There's an amazing scripture that says that God can do exceedingly above and beyond anything we could hope or imagine. He can do these things. And when we, maybe, maybe you're in the room and you say, I don't know that truth. I don't know that God can do exceedingly above and beyond. Well, then that's why you need somebody like myself or other people in the room that we know are full of faith, and they can come around you and say, believe it, it's true that God can do exceedingly above and beyond anything you can hope or imagine. Yeah, that's right. And we need those type of people in our lives. So when we confess a sin to one another, when we confess that something's going on, when we say, hey, things aren't all rosy and lovey-dovey and great around me, that we can be surrounded by men and women who can say, you know what? I see what you're going through. Thank you for our best. Let's bring that before a God who is mighty and who is able to do more than you can hope or imagine and bring you through that jump. God can do it. Let's Amen. believe together that He can. Amen. The last thing we, we need each other. Actually, I won't say the last thing because if you read Scripture, there is tons and tons of truth about the necessary, the need that we have for one another. You can't be obedient to Christ in the New Testament. You can't be obedient to the Gospels without understanding that we need one another. Here's another truth that I will highlight today. It won't, this isn't exhaustive. We need each other so that we can be sharpened. Mm -hmm. Amen. We need each other so that we can be sharpened. One of the hardest things about uh, sin, or, 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 or falling into sin as a believer, is, is the enemy blinds us, and sometimes we're deceived, and we don't even know it. I need my brothers and sisters. You need your brothers and sisters in Christ to sharpen you. Let's read Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17. Another one of those verses that I would say would probably be familiar to many. Maybe worn it on a shirt or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. And um, West Lafayette, they had a Christian uh, apartment complex, and that was that was the, the logo that they had, iron sharpened iron. So Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17. It says, as iron sharpens iron. So, one person sharpens another. Iron sharpens iron. So, one person sharpens another. I need you. And you need me. Because I need to be sharpened. But I love, as we look at the Hebrew word of this passage, so one person sharpens another. And it means the one person chisels the other's face. It sharpens the other's face. It sharpens how we look. Now in the natural, I say, good, I need, I need you because I need to look good. Right? No. In the spiritual, we're saying, iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens it. So one person enables another person's countenance to change. Wow. I don't know about you. I need my 
my countenance. I need my I need myself to change so that I would look more like Jesus. I think that's the call, the cry of everybody's heart this morning. I want to look more like Jesus. I need you because I desire to look more like Jesus. Because hanging out with you is going to make me more like Jesus. Now that can come in two forms. On one side, it can be a blessing because I'm around you and you know so much about God and you so exude the character of God that it changes how I think about things. Ever, anybody been around? I, I, I'm around being married to Rachel for 11 years. I'm around her a lot. Last night I confessed. Rachel loves to give. That's just her heart. Like, even when she was in high school, she was just given to missions. And, you know, that, and when we got married, I was like, I don't know about that. Like, I still need a bank account. And, you know, but, but it's good. It, she exudes. She, her, the character of God in her is one that she just gives. She doesn't care. She gives her, man, she gives people her clothes. She gives people our, our leftover food, I mean shampoo, I, I mean she, she just loves to give and it challenges me because I would rather keep right, I don't know, I'd rather okay, make sure that we have everything in order I mean, you know, we still got, we got something planned, right, we got something to do I can't give this away now, but then what about this and, and she's like, no, I think God just wants us to give and, and I just feel like giving, I said, man Rachel, you so look like Jesus it's awesome, and it challenges, it sharpens me, Amen. right? You were around some of those people, that's why we need each other, right? The way some people serve, and I'm like, man, I don't, I don't know. I have a hard time <laughs> serving people that I think can help themselves. That is just really hard for me. I worked in a nursing home for a little while. It was the most challenging job that I had, and like just serving these Wonderful, wonderful older ladies and, and gentlemen who had, in a particular place that I was serving, they were um, retired missionaries and, and ministers. And even in that part, though, it was just hard for me. I'm like, you just look so helpless. It was hard. But you, know, you guys all know, you'd be around those people that they just, they'll serve. They'll just get down on the floor. They'll wipe. Man, Bobby was wiping and wanted to polish Pastor's shoe last night. I mean, like, you know those individual, and it challenges you, and that's why we need each other. We need to be around them because the character of God that we that, that God has gifted us with, all of a sudden, it, it challenges us and it shapes us. So it's a good thing. There's also another side of things that sharpens us. It's also annoying people. <laughs> People that are hard to get along with. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, I need you. I need you. You need me. You need me. Even in their annoyances, we need them. Why? Because it's going to sharpen us. Because hopefully we get to the point, even in their annoyances, we say, God, I need you. Help me with them. <laughs> then every interaction that we have with somebody else will sharpen us and make us more like Him. Either one way of saying, yes, I, I see that character of you in them, and help me to be like that. I see you, God. I see your character. Help me because I know I lack in that area. God, I, I see you. And God, I need to look like you so that I can help my brother or my sister out. We are sharpened when we have each other. We can look more and more like Christ so that He gets the glory and fruit is produced in our life so that others may taste and see that God is good. We need one another. There is a warning in Proverbs for those of us that think we can stand alone and make it it's another sharp rebuke, some strong words. But let's look at this, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 1.
Proverbs chapter 18, verse 1 says this, Whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound judgment. Whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound judgment. If you're trying to do life with Christ alone, Scripture says, you're breaking out against all sound judgment. Sound doctrine, sound teaching, sound judgment says, I need each other. I need you. You need me. Let's get together. Let's pray together. Let's read together. Let's study the Word of God together. But if we isolate ourselves, we're setting ourselves up for failure. God desires that we would look like a family, having one another's backs, being there for one another, encourage one another, and correcting one another. We need each other. We're not meant to stand alone. Here at Capital City Church, man, we believe in this truth. And we want this to be evident in the way that we relate to one another. Why? Because it's going to help us look more like God. It's going to increase our ability to grow in Christ. If you're, if you're in the room this morning and you're saying, man, I, I've been wanting to grow in Christ or my relationship with Christ has been stagnant. Well, maybe you need to invite somebody into your life to say, hey, let's grow together. Let's walk this thing out together. You know, and this is, this is more than just in our marriage relationships, man, we need each other. We need to encourage one another. We need to uh, lift one another up. We need to walk with one another. Two coming together is better than one. But even in, outside of marriage, we all need each other. We need men. I need men that have my back. You, men in the room, you need men that have your back that you can walk together and you can confess things to each other. You can pray together. You can fight together. You can read the word together. You can meditate together. Man, you can, you can even cry together. You can mourn together. You can rejoice together. Ladies, you need other women, you need sisters that have your back, that you can go to in times of need and pray. You can come together, you can talk together, you can meditate on the word together, you can confess sins to one another, you can strengthen one another, you can lift one another up, you can find other needs and meet those needs. We need each other. We're not meant to walk this alone. Man, if I could get so practical, maybe some of you guys in the room don't even have each other's numbers. Man, start there. Say, hey, can I get your I, I don't know you've been here, and it, it can be embarrassing. I know you've been here for weeks, months, years. I still don't know. I don't even know your number. I can't even call you to get a hold of you to meet up because I don't even know your number. If that's you, then man, after the service, we'll just have contact exchange, you know, going on so that we can get together. We can know one another. We can meet together. And as practical as we all, most of us in this room, I was, I was going to say we all, most of us in this room eat three days, three meals a day. Right? I think so. Man, eating with one another, meeting up, gathering. Most of us love Starbucks. I see it in cups that you guys are all bringing in all the time, right? I mean, get together. Encourage one another. We're going to walk through this series and we're going to give you at the end of the series, a practical tool to get together. Three steps, whenever you get together, how can we continue to grow? We're going to give you three steps. So we're going to give a little bookmarker, so you can either put it in your Bible, you can carry it in your pocket, whatever, so that whenever you guys get together and have one of these type moments, that we have three steps. Say, hey, let's all pray together. Let's all read the Bible. Let's all encourage one another. And that's how we, we're going to give you some practical ways through this uh, message series on how we can make this happen so that we're church and not just individuals. That's right. And you guys are all accomplished individuals. I love it. But we need each other. We need to come together.
Amen.